Hey, welcome to our video series where I talk about process automation. Did you realize how core systems or, or major off-the-shelf software like CRM or ERP became process automation platforms? When you need to automate the process and store some extra data, you throw it into the existing system just because it's already deployed. Now, I see at least a few good reasons for this. Number one, you have a service provider or maybe internal resources. Number two, you have a budget. You don't have to go to procurement or do security checks, that's three. And four, at least some users are onboarded, so you don't need additional licenses. So it's the path of least resistance and probably the most efficient solution. Or is it? There are some issues with this approach I'm gonna discuss here. Major vendors like SAP and Salesforce and Microsoft noticed the trend long ago, so they released a set of tools to make it easier. They function under two popular buzzwords, low-code and no-code. It's always easier to cross-sell instead of winning a new customer, especially in the enterprise market, so it was a smart move. But with great power comes great complexity. Let's take Dynamics and Power Platform as an example. I love how complementary the toolchain is. The trio of Dynamics, Power Apps, and Power Automate is like nothing else in the low-code market landscape. In case you haven't seen it, here's a quick walkthrough. Microsoft Dynamics 365 is a cloud-based portfolio of business applications. It's an ERP, CRM, and probably even more. Now, Dynamics uses Dataverse under the hood, and Dataverse is simply a database. You can use Power Apps, Power Automate, and other Dynamics features to add or change views and implement custom entities, and of course, business logic without writing a single line of code. What's nice is that once you have Dynamics and Power Platform active on the same instance of Microsoft 365, you don't need to set up anything. Everything works seamlessly as a single ecosystem. Dynamics is just an example. SAP or Salesforce and Oracle have similar capabilities. It sounds very tempting to keep adding custom things, but you should know that this path can be a rabbit hole. There are at least five risks you should consider in the decision process. Number one is poor user experience. Okay, imagine a huge library full of books. That's your core system with all the features nicely organized. But your user is a chemistry student and he needs only a handful of books open on the right pages with nice images and a clean layout. Adding one more book to the chemistry section will not help much if students need to look for the specific row, shelf, book, and page every time they start learning. So the vendors want that whatever you add to the system, it's fit into the framework. Consistency usually is a good thing when you design user experience, but the same consistency imposed by the software vendor can be your enemy. The problem is that the way it works is only sometimes optimal for your use case. The framework is designed to work with all user roles and all the features you can possibly add. You are not optimized for any of them. And yes, you can remove some options or reorganize fields and forms. Still, it's not the flexibility that will allow you to fully optimize the system for a particular role like our chemistry student and a unique set of tasks. Your changes must fit into the existing UX framework. And exceptions, even if possible, can be hard to implement and even harder to maintain. Here is an example. A client who, after a long time with Dynamics, decided to migrate to another local platform for rapid software development. Before the transition, the system was full of unnecessary options. The views were only partially adjusted to different user groups and calling some actions often required picking a run flow option, searching the flow on the list instead of clicking the action button from the most relevant place. UX is important. People pick electric scooters based on the UI and UX of related applications instead of the quality of the scooter itself. The same users will not be happy with extra workflows that are hard to follow, require lots of clicking and are irrelevant to their job, yet still somehow present in the space. And number two is maintenance. When you write a custom functionality for your ERP, CRM, or whatever core system you have, you add work to your pre-upgrade task list because major software releases often cause problems. Low code like Power Apps was designed to reduce this issue, but it is still certainly present. People who deal with this complex machinery 
are usually pricey and are waiting on the bench for you to come. And that leads us to number three, bottlenecks. Microsoft 365 is a conglomeration of applications. Power Apps, Power Automate, Power Pages, Dynamics, Dataverse, etc. For some of the requirements, you're gonna need to use multiple apps to make it work. That leads to the complexity I've mentioned. I know you Power Platform experts will fight me on that and fight me on that, but it feels like this fragmentation does more harm than good. Here is an example from the Microsoft ecosystem. There are a couple of ways or a few ways to implement custom features. We've got PowerFX, Excel-like functions. We've got business rules on tables, Power Automate, calculated fields, business process flows, and custom code like C-sharp and JavaScript. Now with this in mind, think of all the processes like learning, debugging, or handover. Imagine all this on a much bigger scale with hundreds of business rules implemented across, or possibly thousands of business rules implemented across dozens of applications. Again, it's a super robust ecosystem, but picking correct method and ensuring good maintainability can be challenging. If you go that path, it can quickly become apparent that your highly desired Microsoft, SAP, or Salesforce experts cannot keep up with your requests. Number four is tightly coupling. Before you deploy a whole set of custom functionalities, think about what will happen if you decide to replace the core system. The less customized your system is, the less work you have while upgrading or migrating. So in other words, keep the core clean. Number five, quite obvious, access my required additional licenses. Your users will need a license to access whatever you put into the core system. Make some calculations upfront to ensure it's an optimal solution. Now, before throwing in more stuff on the existing platform, ask yourself the critical question. Does your custom functionality modify the existing processes or is it a different process that should be handled elsewhere using existing data when needed? Now, you may ask, what are the alternatives? It depends. Sometimes relying on what you already have is the best or the only way. But whatever you feel you have some wiggle room, look at your case from the perspective of the roadmap. Where are you heading? What else do you need within the one year time horizon? Do you need a new module or fine tune the existing process? What are your constraints like time, budget, or regulations? You might be losing the big picture when searching for quick wins. Depending on the answers, you might be more or less prone to the issues I've mentioned. If the list of features requests is long, process don't need to be run from the context of a different system, and you want to find a long-term solution, definitely check other options. And think twice before you add a whole new module that could be a separate application, much better optimized for the job, maybe only loosely connected to the core system for data exchange. You will open yourself to more optimal technology for your project, which can lead to fewer bottlenecks, simplified maintenance, and improved UX. You've seen how complex the Microsoft ecosystem can be with all the apps and customization options. It's, it's all for a good reason, but whether you need it or not is a different story. Of course, we are not discussing traditional programming here when considering alternatives, rather standalone local leaders like, for example, Mendix from Siemens. Let me show you. Here in Control Center, you can see all your apps. Each app can access different data sources, like Dynamics 365, Salesforce, or SAP. Every piece of business logic lives in microflows organized amongst different modules. It's that simple. In addition, you have workflows that represent the whole business process. You only need to learn a single method of implementing the business logic, and it's easy to search across the whole microflow catalog. Imagine the difference in developers' efficiency when comparing the two approaches. By the way, I will soon release a complete comparison of Power Platform and Mendix, so don't forget to subscribe. In Mendix, you have more flexibility regarding user interface and more deployment options. Microsoft 365 ecosystem is a beast. It's powerful, there's no doubt about it. Other platforms like SAP BSD or Salesforce are also packed with features. So just research and ask the right questions before betting on the wrong horse. I wish you luck with your automation and see you on the next one.